Hey guys, my name's Sandy, this is Sawing with Sandy, and today I'm going to talk about what's on my right, being my 2017 Woodland Mills HM130, and I'm going to also talk about this one right behind me, which is brand new. This is made by Woodland Mills as well, this is my HM130 Max. Now at first glance, they appear to be exactly the same, and in fact, they also share the model name, HM130 and HM130 Max, but this word right here, Max, Definitely makes this one just a little bit more, more refined, we'll call it. It's got some more bells and whistles and features that my older one doesn't have. This is the most recent model. This one is a few years old. So I'm going to talk about the difference here. This one's cut thousands and thousands of board feet, and this one hasn't yet. But we'll still talk about the differences because I have a feeling this one will eventually be just like that one and cutting thousands of board feet. One thing I'm not going to talk about today is how this one's on a trailer because the fact of the matter is if you have an older version like that, you can get that on a trailer as well. Another thing I'm not going to talk about is this right here. This right here, this extra little handle on my older unit, that's a lap siding attachment. I'm not going to talk about that because, well, that's not on this unit. So what we will talk about is what is on here and what did come on there standard and you guys will see exactly what the difference is. Welcome back guys, glad you're here. All right, so the biggest thing that you're probably gonna notice with this unit compared with that unit is this has electric start. Although both units have the exact same engine, which is a 14 horsepower Kohler Command Pro, this one on the new unit has the option of the electric start, so it's got a spot for a battery and obviously a key. This one over here does not. So you see that extra spot on the other one that sits right here? This one does not, it has a recoil start, pull start. That thing fires right up with pull start, so does this one. So that's uh, one of the big benefits, I guess, if you're looking for that electric start, maybe you got a bad shoulder, then the new unit's got it, the old one doesn't. Another thing with this HM130 Max that is probably the most obvious, especially if you're looking at like a technical data sheet is the width of cut you can make if we use my tape measure here and if we measure the distance from here all the way over to here and this is kind of hard to do I'll set you guys down for a minute this is kind of hard to do one-handed right from there all the way to here you can make a 30 inch wide cut without problems. It's actually a little bit more than 30 inches there. If we're getting real technical, that's 30 and a half inches from blade guide to blade guide. So confidently you could get a 30 inch piece in there, 30 inch log. Now let's go over here and let's have a look at the old unit. This is one of the biggest differences. This unit, although it says HM130, you're not gonna get a 30 inch log in here. That right there is 23 and one quarters of an inch. So give or take 23 inches is what you're getting in there. That is probably the single biggest difference between the two electric start and width of cut. One of the other differences you're going to notice as well on this old one, and you can tell how much I've used it by all the buildup on the handle, but the old one has a different height adjustment. You guys can see it here. You crank the handle and once you get to the spot you want it, you lock it in position. That's different than this unit over here, which as you can see, you have to put a little bit of force inwards. And then this comes this way. And then you turn it like so, or the other way. And then once it's where you need it to be, you just let go and it goes back into position. So that's another thing that's different. This right here, this one's got an hour meter. That one doesn't have an hour meter. If you asked me how many hours I've put on that thing, I put a lot on there, but I have no idea specifically. One other thing while we're here, look at the new one. See the shape of the handle? This handle, which can go in this direction or it can go in this direction if you've got this sawmill mounted on the ground. This is different than my old one right here. You guys see this type of handle, right? This shape is exactly the same, but the actual location is different. The actual location it mounts. This has the option of mounting down here as well, but obviously it's different with a shape like this. When we talk about blades on the old one versus the new one, the old blade has 144 inch length and it's inch and a quarter, whereas the new one is 156 inches in length and it's inch and a half. So they're not interchangeable, but uh, that's okay. 
Another thing you'll notice here, for our adjustable blade guide, so in order for that blade guide to slide in and out, I'm gonna use this handle here and I'm basically just gonna pull. There's no locking mechanism. But if you look real closely and you may not be able to see, I don't know, maybe you'll be able to see down in there. As I pull, there's little indentations and there's actually a little, I guess I'll call it a plunger or something, but it goes into those indentations and it puts it into specific spots and creates resistance. So this is not loose right now. And by loose, I mean, it's not gonna just sort of fall floppy doppy in and out. It goes into the indentations without having to use an actual manual lock. There's those depressions I mentioned there, which allows this to have dedicated spots where it sort of stops. Whereas this one, you'll notice it goes in and out freely, but you need to lock it into place. So if I wanted it there, I would have to lock it into place. So looking at the 2017 model, you're gonna notice this big T-handle here with the nut welded onto the end. This is where I put my torque wrench in order to torque the blade to uh, 25 foot-pounds. Now, this is the one method that I use with the 2017, but it's a little bit different with the 2021 version. If we have a look here, you'll notice there is a spot I can put a torque wrench, but instead of being a nut, it's actually just a spot I can put the wrench itself. I can set that torque in the blade to something very similar to my old one, 20 to 25 foot-pounds. There's also uh, two other methods. One includes counting the number of turns of this little T-handle, two and a half to three turns. And there's one other method in which uh, you basically make, well, currently this is, this is tension, but basically you make this bearing here, which will stick out. You make it flush with the edge of this uh, steel cylinder. Back at the 2021 model, you're gonna notice there's a steel wheel here with a bearing, and there's another one down here with a bearing. Well, this is what allows for this, uh, this handle to slide in and out as I showed you a minute ago. There's also the V groove there. That makes it so that it, this handle here doesn't go up or down or left or right. It's very, very sturdy. Whereas if we look at the other one, the 2017, you'll notice they didn't have those steel wheels with this unit. They've got that, that bushing there. It's white in color. There's also one on the other side. We make our way around there. But that's what allows that handle to slide in and out, but it does create a little bit of motion as the years go by, because obviously that bushing will wear just a little bit. So that's another difference. If we make our way up to the top of the scale here, you're gonna notice this whole setup is a little bit different on the brand new model versus the older model. I don't know what I like better at this point. They both serve a purpose, but there was probably a reason for the upgrade, but we'll see how it works. Question I get asked quite a bit, pertains to this right here, the blade guard. So you'll notice there's a yellow one here on the brand new model. Whereas if we come over, come over to the other one, my 2017 model, there isn't one. This 2017 model didn't come with one. And so that's been a recent addition. I didn't take it off, it just didn't come with one. So the new one does. Back over to the new one, you'll notice these steel wires here. These steel wires are designed to keep the wheels clean on both the front and the back wheels. This new one has it just like the old one does, very, very similar. Making our way to the front here. All right, so things are a little bit different here on the new model. One thing I'll point out to you in a minute, this is, uh, this is tensioned a little bit different, so I can move this, this pulley here a little bit differently. You'll notice with this one, I can simply loosen off that bolt and then that can move in order to apply tension to the driven belt. On this side, this belt is different altogether. On my old version, you're gonna notice there's an orange, I believe it's polyurethane belt, and it actually rides tight on the band wheel. This one is designed to ride loose, as it says right here. And so that is something that I had to get used to, quite a bit different. Aside from that, we're still using the centrifugal clutch. The band wheels look very similar. But as I mentioned before, the blade on this one, because it's a wider sawmill in general, the blade is a bit longer. In fact, someone's going to ask me, and I'm going to grab the tape measure so you can get an answer. Someone's going to ask me, how much wider is it overall? Well, let's just measure it, because I have no idea. Let's see if we can hook a tape measure on there. All right, so that's from outside to outside. If you guys have a look there, what are we at? Let's just, let's just round it off. That's 71 inches or 70 and three quarters, for those of you who want to be exact. All right, let's go over to the old one. Let's see the total width of that one. Then I'll show you inside. Oh, I'll show you inside here. Let's open her up. I 
I've already undone the bottom two hooks. All right, let's see what we got. This tape measure is pretty junky. There we go. Ah. When your tape measure gets old, it no longer wants to stay straight. Okay, there we go, 64 inches. Okay, so you guys can see the big difference there. Give or take, we're at about seven inches wider with the other unit, and that pretty much explains why we can get a wider, wider log in there to cut. Anyways, let's look at the old one, the 2017. You can see the cast iron band wheels are pretty much the same. But if we get rid of the sawdust here, you guys can see that orange colored belt here. It rides tight on the band wheel. That's the difference. Uh, another thing you're gonna notice is this right here. The pulley itself is very similar, but there's no adjustment to move this pulley on this side of the band wheel. So on the back of the sawmill, that's the bolt that goes to that pulley. What you're gonna notice is there's no adjustment to it. Now I can take the pulley out, but if I wanna add tension to that driven belt, what I have to do is I have to loosen off the motor mounts and I have to move the motor over just a little bit. If we look up here, you're gonna notice that's the adjustment in order to move the motor over a bit, and that's gonna add a bit of tension to that driven belt. If we go have a look at the newer model, you're gonna notice there is no adjustment for those engine mounts. You'll notice there's the bolts, they go up through the bottom of the engine, but they don't have any form of adjustment because this engine stays in one position. You don't move it over in order to tension the driven belt. As I said, you can make the adjustments to this pulley, which puts tension on that driven belt simply by adjusting that bolt. Back on the new model, you'll notice this extension on the drain plug on the engine. So this is great because it's outside of the edge of the frame of the sawmill. I can more or less just release that and then I have a little catch can or something here to get the oil. Keeps everything nice and clean. Whereas if we go to the old model, 2017, you'll notice there's a drain plug up in there. Well, what happens is you take that bolt out and then the oil sort of runs all over the place and you have to catch it down here. Then you have to wipe that clean. If we drain it from this side using that bolt right there, that drain plug, it's even worse. It runs all over the place. So it's quite nice, the new one, how they have that drain plug extension. Now on the driven band wheel side here, this is very similar on the old one to the new one. You guys can see right there. You'll notice they started putting a sticker there to remind people to refer to the manual before touching this. In fact, I have never touched that thus far. It was set up good from the factory. This one over here, I've adjusted just a few times over the years, not all that much. Let's slide back up here to the old one. I want to talk about one very important change that the new one has that the old one doesn't. And what that is, there's a bit of a vent here on the uh, lubrication tank on the new one. There isn't here. Now you'll notice the bottom here, the adjustment is very similar on the new one, but without that vent tube, uh, you can get some issues with the old one. You'll also notice this one here has no form of auto lube. So it has the, it has the uh, lube coming out right here. And then I can adjust the flow rate with this more precisely right here. Now this is aftermarket, my original uh, froze on me by, by air, but this is how I control the on and off more or less. This new one has auto lube system. You can see the lube comes down very similar to the other one. And then uh, in this case, it's going to come out right onto the blade. But if we make our way up here, you're gonna notice what's different. See this vent? That vent is not on the old one. This is gonna be very, very nice. The other thing with the auto lube, it gets activated down here with the throttle. So here's the throttle. When I pull the lever, it's going to apply pressure right here. If you guys look, it, it's going to press on that little activation plunger. And then this must be some sort of a valve so the uh, lubrication can come down. Once that's pushed in, it'll allow the lubrication to come down and obviously out here onto the blade. So with the new one being physically bigger, the track is also just a little bit bigger. If you guys have a look down here, I have a look down there. You guys look at the uh, the, the uh, width there. So we're at about, oh, three and three quarters of an inch wide. And then if we look up this way, we're at about, what's that, two inches? Maybe a touch more, two and an eighth high. Let's go look at the other one. All right, so this one, we're at about three and three quarters of an inch, maybe three and seven eighths of an inch wide. And it's a bit difficult for me to measure the height because we have the, 
we have the trailer on here but in terms of overall height you're floating at about try to hold it steady there you're floating at about two and a quarter inch all right so just physically bigger it looks like the dimensions of the log bunks are the same so we're at three inches by six inches they're also uh, on the new model it's also just a little bit wider to account for the wider log spacing between the log bunks so from here to here is identical on both sawmills old and new the log stops and their positioning on the new one and the old one are identical so there's the short log stop right there if you look down below we've got that t-handle and here's the log log stop has that miter on the top just like on the old one we look at the log clamp identical the old one you've got the t-handle to tighten it you also have the adjustment right here so you can clamp it onto the log exactly the same old and new cable system all the pulleys all the cables this uh, tensioning system down here for the cable identical on the old one as is the new one the only difference is this handle from what i can see the bushing system for allowing the saw head to go up and down you'll notice right here as well as down here appears to be exactly the same on the old as well as the new one right here you'll notice the difference the hinges are a little bit different there's the new one you'll notice you got a bolt that could actually be replaced if you needed to you'll also notice the hinge it's removable whereas the old one a little bit different you see the hinge here is like a door style so it's welded on both and then there's a pin that goes through it that's fine and dandy it's lasted for me but because it's welded onto both if that thing wears out i've got no recourse i don't know what i would do i'd have to well i'd have to figure that out but it's certainly not a bolt-on unit that i can replace as is the new one this angular piece of steel this is here in order to hit the log stop before your blade hits it just in case you forget to lower this this is on the new one my old one has the exact same thing and just some small subtle stuff like you'll notice the width of the metal piece here where the scale mounts to on the other side they made this a little bit wider on the new version and as a result you can put your spare scale on the back side when it's not in use in contrast i keep mine generally right about here or i keep it like right now just up top here but it doesn't really fit all that good this right here is too wide to fit on the back and so a nice thing they did was make that wider so it does have a dedicated spot to hang out well guys i think i covered the bases quite well but you'll let me know down below in the comments i hope if i missed anything on the similarities and differences between my 2017 HM130 and my 2022 HM130 Max. In fact, I think I might have called this a 2021. This is a 2022 model, brand new to me. So if we look at this overall, I would say this thing has had some improvements, some refinements to it. Aside from the fact that it cuts bigger logs, this thing has had some slight refinements to it, which makes it just a little bit better than my 2017. But because I've cut thousands of board feet on that, I'm expecting to cut the exact same on this. Even though there are some changes, I think it'll just make that board cutting just a little bit easier. If we look at some of those changes, just to summarize, electric start, we got auto lube, the lever for the throttles in a different position. We have a different handle for up and down, different scale setup. We have different belts on the drive wheels underneath the cover there. We've got a blade guard. And as I mentioned, we've also got quite a bit wider cuts, wider dimensions on some of the uh some of the tracks so all those things add up to definitely a bigger sawmill something more capable but nonetheless as i said i'm hoping this thing will stand the test of time like the other one has you guys all take care out there enjoy the sunshine make some cuts if you can and i'll see you next time